Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, let's try to understand what is DevSecOps, how to transition from a DevOps engineer to DevSecOps engineer, and finally, some real-time DevSecOps project ideas. So please watch this video till the end. First things first, let's try to understand what exactly is DevSecOps. In simple words, DevSecOps is nothing but adding security best practices to your DevOps culture. So as part of your DevOps engineering job role, whatever are your day-to-day -day activities or roles and responsibilities, adding security practices to those day-to-day -day activities or roles and responsibilities is called as DevSecOps. Let's try to understand with an example, how can a DevOps engineer in XYZ organization transition into a DevSecOps engineer in a very easy way. So you don't have to do any certifications or you don't have to learn any courses. You can implement security as part of the task that you are doing and transition into a DevSecOps engineer. So in this XYZ organization, which has code written in the Java programming language. There is a DevOps engineer called Rob and Rob is currently working as a DevOps engineer. What Rob has done is Rob has implemented a CI CD pipeline, which is triggered on every pull request. And this CI CD pipeline has multiple stages such as the build stage, unit testing stage, Docker image creation stage, Docker image push stage, and deploying this application onto a Kubernetes cluster using the GitOps approach. This is what Rob has done as part of his DevOps engineering job role. Now, what Rob can do is add security best practices to this CI CD pipeline and easily transition into a DevSecOps engineer. What are those security best practices? Now Rob can add additional stages additionally to the build and unit testing stage. Even before building and unit testing, what Rob can do is Rob can implement a stage and this stage can scan the code. For example, why you need this stage? or why you need to add this security best practice is assume there is a developer who has created a pull request and this pull request adds five new lines of Java code. It just adds five new lines of Java code which triggered the CI CD pipeline, but only after deploying the application onto the Kubernetes cluster, once this entire pipeline is done, and deployed the application to Kubernetes cluster. And during the verification, the QA team has reported that this new PR adds SQL injection. And this SQL injection is basically is adding a vulnerability to the application because it's kind of hackers can hack your application because it adds the SQL injection. It's a vulnerability. So what Rob can do as part of DevSecOps job role, even before the build and unit testing stage, Rob can add a code scanning stage. And this code, ca code scanning can identify the SQL injection even before running all of these stages and deploying the application, maybe after four to five days, the QE has reported the SQL injection, but if you are implementing a DevSecOps pipeline and adding the code scanning, you can identify it even before running all the other stages of CI CD pipeline. There is a lot of time safe and additionally, you have also made sure that the application is very secure. Now, how do you do this? It's very simple. You can use tools such as uh, SNCC. So using SNCC, you can easily scan your code and it has a 
vulnerability database which can identify if there is anything that is in your code or in this new file lines which is creating the sql injection second thing that rob can do is once the docker image is built rob can add stages such as docker image scan so here i was talking about the code scan and now i am talking about the image scan image scan because who knows the docker base image that you are using or the packages that you have added to your docker image usually you say from let's say ubuntu and then using the run statement you might have installed any number of packages let's say you have installed using run yum install xyz in the docker image and this xyz has added a critical vulnerability to your docker image so as a devsecops engineer again what rob can do is modify this ci cd pipeline and add a stage here to scan the docker image basically using trivi or clear or docker scout there are so many things or even you can also use the snick in the same stage right sorry you can use the same tool in a different stage which can also be possible so my focus here is not to talk about the tools i will be doing demos in the future videos where i'll talk more about the tools but for now just understand for rob to transition from a devops engineer to devsecops engineer okay devops engineer to devsecops engineer rob is making a very simple changes to his day to day activities that is incorporating the security best practices so we have done two things in the ci cd pipeline one is adding the code scanning second is adding the image scanning similarly in any activity that rob does on a day to day basis if rob adds the security best practices then rob becomes a devsecops engineer that's it this can be as simple as let's say rob is using terraform and rob's terraform files has some secrets rob's terraform files has some sensitive information so rob can integrate terraform with hashicorp vault or any other secret management services or the vault services then rob becomes a devsecops engineer let's say rob is using ansible and similarly in ansible rob is securing the sensitive information previously using environment variables now if rob transitions these environment variables or instead of using the environment variables if rob starts using vault or aws system manager parameter store or aws secrets manager or azure vault wherever rob is running this ansible services if rob adds those security practices then rob becomes devsecops engineer this is not only related to terraform or vault or ci cd it can be like i told you anything it can be even with kubernetes right even in kubernetes instead of using any sort of security wrong practices if rob incorporates the security best practices such as securing api server taking backups of etcd rotating sensitive information in his or her kubernetes secrets all these things comes under security best practices and tasks of a devsecops engineer so there is no standard definition of a devsecops engineer's roles and responsibilities it is only incorporating security best practices to your regular devops engineering job role you don't have to do any certifications you don't have to go through any courses take your existing projects try to see where you can add security to it then you become a devsecops engineer 
but still abhishek i want to know some projects you know even after saying this if you need some projects then take the ci cd pipeline on our channel which is the ultimate ci cd pipeline for example where i have implemented the ci cd pipeline for a java application and deployed it onto kubernetes using argo cd which is for the gitops practice or even in the azure zero to hero we have some ci cd uh, pipelines so take those ci cd pipelines and add code scanning as i have explained and docker image scanning this becomes your project number 1 that is your devsecops project project number 2 in one of the azure zero to hero projects what i have done is i have integrated kubernetes with hashi azure vault so instead of using the kubernetes secrets i have used vault azure vault which will rotate the secrets that is change the secrets once in 180 days or once in 270 days so that even for some reason your kubernetes secret is leaked or one of your employee has left the organization but for some reason you have not changed the password and your employee still knows the kubernetes secret that you are using so if you change the secret once in 90 days once in 270 days or once in 360 days then there are good chances of even if you forget to change your kubernetes secret the secrets are automatically rotated and you are secure from any kind of sensitive leaks for that i have implemented kubernetes vault integration that video link will also be in the description you can check that and by implementing you can add one more devsecops project to your resume project number 3 you can integrate terraform with a, a secrets manager or other way around what you can do is put your terraform state file in a s3 bucket and implement dynamo db state locking this is also a devsecops project okay don't assume that this is a devops project anything that you are incorporating security best practices with becomes a devsecops project ideally in the world of devops in 2024 there is nothing called devsecops because in 2024 you cannot hire a different engineer who is taking care of security for your devops projects instead every devops engineer should be thinking about security and transitioning into a devsecops role that's why devops engineer in 2024 and going ahead should be called as devsecops engineer because they will be taking care of security right so i hope you like this video and if you have any comments do let me know in the comment section any feedback i will take it in the comment section thank you so much for watching it see you all in the next video take care